Representative Donalds, thank you for joining us in the Phi TV studios. We're here talking about the First Step Act. You are the House sponsor. It's uh, sponsored over in the Senate by uh, Senator Brandis. Um, this bill is attempting to really kind of streamline the transition process for folks that are incarcerated and kind of improve Florida's economy. But there's all sorts of questions about public safety and things like that. What are you trying to accomplish with this bill that was signed by President Trump at the federal level, but now it's the Florida solution? So what are you trying to accomplish with this bill? The number one thing we need to accomplish and understand is that when people do wrong in our society, when they're punished in our criminal justice system, we do believe that they have to pay their, their debt. They have to do the time. But at the same time, there has to be an avenue for them to re-enter society. There's a point where the inmate has to become a citizen again. And so, you know, we, I know I'm thankful for the leadership of President Trump and the members in, in the Capitol in Washington who saw for the first time in, in more than 30 years an opportunity to actually make uh, crime and, and how we deal with criminal justice, do it in a smart way. And that's what we're going to do here in Florida. We're going to do that in a number of ways. Okay. Number one, we're going to provide some additional time, uh, some additional time off of sentences for educational attainment. Right now in Florida, 85% of your sentence that you are, 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 are charged with, you have to serve 85% of that time. What we're saying in our bill is that we'll take an additional 60 days off if you go get a credential, if you go get your GED, something that can help you be a productive citizen once your time in prison is gone. Another thing that we're going to be looking at is giving discretion to judges in some drug offenses. One of the biggest things we have to understand and know is that state attorneys have full discretion whether to charge at all, whether to cut a deal, or to, to give you the full length of punishment under the law. Mm -hmm. But at the end of those proceedings, the judge has no ability to have some discretion Discretion in the sentence so in some other the, services. The come judge up. the same leeway as the prosecutor almost has mm -hmm. in that case. Okay. I mean, you got to understand a prosecutor and a judge are both human beings. But what we're saying in current law is that the prosecutor can have full discretion and a judge has no discretion. Uh, that doesn't properly balance the, the, the cases that may, came, may come up. The actual issues, the actual circumstances, the things that, that can't just be um, outlined in a broad um, mandatory minimum scheme that we currently have in our state. Mm -hmm. So it kind of brings a little bit of humanity to sentencing and that those are the reforms that I think are necessary. Well, what do you say to the uh, maybe potential critics that might say, oh, well, you're just going easy on crime. I mean, how will this affect your harder offenders versus your your nonviolent offenders? You know, wh how do you how do you see this playing out? Um, actually, I think it's going to be a net positive to the criminal justice system as a whole. One of the things we have to make sure we are come to grips with, we have to have a come to Jesus moment with the fact that we incarcerate, we don't rehabilitate. And so if you want to have a, a, a society that is safe, you do want to punish offenders. Mm -hmm. But you, have, you can still be tough on crime, but you can be smart on justice. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here. The second thing I would say is, is that you still have to serve 85% of your time. That's not going away. The additional 60 days takes it down from 85% of your time to 84.1% of your time. Right. So people are still having to pay their debt and make and, and, and do the time necessary to make up for what they did wrong and how they've harmed society. Right. But they still have to come back. Right. right At the end of the day, an inmate can't stay an inmate forever. They were a citizen before they went into the incarceration, and they have to become a citizen coming out of incarceration. Right. right. Well, we know that this bill also incorporates ideas on reuniting families to, to, to reduce that recidivism, workforce training. So we'll continue to, to tune in to see how this bill shapes up during the legislative session. And we sure appreciate you coming on and telling us about why you're bringing this bill to the legislature. All right. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Mr. Matthew Charles, you're joining us here in Phi TV studios in the capital of the state of Florida. Thank you for joining us. Um, you uh, have inspired Congress to, to pass a law, which typically they don't do, right? They're very, very stuck at, at being in conflict up there. But the First Step Act, they passed this out and it was signed by President Trump. And it's gone a long way to reform how our, our federal prison system helps people to transition out and, and become productive members of society again after serving their time. Before we get into a, a little bit of that, tell us your story. Like, how did you, ins what was your story that inspired Congress? Just, just start with that. Uh, in 1995, I was arrested for a nonviolent drug offense, uh, during which time I was given a 35 year sentence. Uh, I served 21 and a half years on that sentence without any infractions or violations within the rural prisons itself. Then the crack cocaine to powder cocaine ratio changed in 2010. And because of that, I filed a petition. And in doing so, I was released from prison by uh, Judge Kevin Sharp. 
but the government appealed that sentence and successfully won. But throughout that process, I had been back out into society for almost two years. Right. And, and, and so then what happened? Uh, during that time, when I went back or while I was out? No, no, yeah, both. Okay, while I was out, I got a good job, got an apartment, got a truck, got a church family, as well as I volunteered my services. And then I was told that I had to go back. So I had mm. to give up my truck, mm. <laughs> lose my apartment, lose the job, and return to prison for no real reason except the fact that the law stated that I shouldn't have received the reduction right. from the first place. Right, okay, so, so that inspired Congress to change how they do the sentencing? Is that how that worked? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that aspect of it uh, inspired them. The part that inspired them was once they had seen that I had served over 20 years for a nonviolent drug offense, mm -hmm. once they was able to pull up my Bureau of Prison records and seen that it was actually spotless and that I had been rehabilitated with no avenue of being heard in the court for that said rehabilitation right. and the fact that I had been released as a productive member of society. So that story inspired Congress and the Senate to say, hey, we need to take a look at our justice system. Yeah, well, well, in Florida, we're working on our First Step Act, Act here. We've got Senator Brandis and Representative Donalds. Um, they're talking about it. They're talking about it with us as well. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for coming to Florida to, to, to share your story. It, 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 and, you know, I think, I think the other piece is, is that you had done job training and done a bunch of training during your first cycle when you were incarcerated, yes, correct? That's correct. So you'd done all that without any incentives just to better yourself while you're in the system. That is correct. Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an inspiration. That's, I think, what, what every American would hope when somebody goes to serve their time, that that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're bettering themselves. Oh, yes, sir. It should always be about rehabilitation as opposed to incapacitation. Yeah. Because whenever it's about incapacitation, you can go there and serve whatever sentence that you have and still come out unchanged. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mr. Matthew Charles, we're grateful that you joined us in Phi TV to hear your story. I'm sure it will inspire our members of our legislature just as much as it inspired Congress to act and, of course, the president to sign the bill. So thanks for coming on. Okay, thank you for having me. Appreciate I you, appreciate sir. It. Thank you. Yeah.